Hey guys, welcome to the Amanda and Rich Show. Today I'm going to be doing part two of our part three series on car strategies and techniques. Um, this is our second video, so it's going to be a little bit more specific than the previous video. And in this video, I'm going to walk you guys through kind of the strategies and thought process that I would use when I was going through and reading an actual passage. I'm going to be taking this video kind of slow. I'm going to be reading each sentence and then kind of summarizing that sentence in order to formulate a main idea for the paragraph. So if you guys want to go a little bit faster than that, you can pause the video and read each paragraph on your own. But try your best to pause after each sentence and start to summarize it and then come up with your own main idea. And then throughout the video, I give you guys timestamps where you can click through to find the part of the video where I start talking about the main idea. So you can kind of skip through the part where I'm reading out loud and kind of giving you my thought process if that is more suited to your learning style. All right, so let's start with paragraph one. Kant says that one's duty to oneself consists in a prohibition against making oneself a plaything of mere inclinations. Okay, so I would read that sentence and pause. And to be honest, after I pause, that sentence is kind of confusing. It's not a very straightforward sentence. Um, but so whenever I would come across a sentence where it's like not too straightforward, it's filled with all these crazy words like play things, I don't know, it's, it's a little bit weird. So I would kind of just like break it down in a way that is like understandable and really short just so that my brain can kind of start to follow what's going on. So basically the whole, I guess, big picture of this one little sentence is that we just know he's talking about one's duty to oneself and that it involves not becoming a plaything. Um, another thing I want to note here is whenever you see a person's name listed in the paragraph that's not the author or not the speaker, I would just make note of where it is in the passage because a lot of the time questions refer to it, so that's one good thing to keep in mind. All right, so let's move on to the next sentence. This is a truly persuasive argument regarding human dignity because the es essence of human dignity must be considered to be never to deal with a person as a thing. All right, so this sentence is a little bit easier, I think, to understand. The first part's kind of interesting, and I would just kind of note to yourself, the speaker, the author, is now saying that Kent's argument is persuasive. So he's kind of agreeing with it. So that's good to keep in mind. And he's basically, he's bringing in the idea of human dignity and saying that basically human dignity is not treating a person as a thing. Not having human dignity is equivalent to being compared to a thing. All right, let's read the next sentence. It seems that the domination of a person by drug-induced happiness should be regarded as a clear violation of human dignity because it is equal to debasing a person to a plaything of inclinations. All right, so they're kind of starting to draw a relationship between drug-induced happiness and human dignity. And they're saying that drug-induced happiness violates human dignity because drug-induced happiness makes a person into a thing or a plaything of inclinations. So I think we're starting to get a better idea. They're talking about human dignity. They're talking about how drug-induced happiness is relating to human dignity and the drug-induced happiness we know is actually violating human dignity. So that's good. We have this in mind. Let's keep reading. Hence, human dignity is taken away in exchange for a sense of happiness induced by a drug. This sentence is pretty much like um, saying the exact same thing as the previous sentence. So they're kind of nice there in that if you didn't get the previous sentence, that second sentence kind of reinforces the idea for you guys. And the fact that they repeated it, that should be like standing out to you guys so that you can kind of say in your mind, okay, they repeated this idea that human dignity is violated by drug-induced happiness. That seems like it's kind of the main idea of this paragraph because they repeated it. So let's keep reading. Let us go on further. In the case of drug-induced happiness, those people are deprived of the freedom to feel unhappiness and are degraded to a plaything of mere inclinations. Hence, they are considered to be devoid of human dignity. Again, so they're like repeating this main idea again, and they're kind of tying in plaything of mere inclinations with human dignity and with um, the drug-induced happiness. So again, we're formulating that main idea of this paragraph in our head. We're kind of saying drug-induced happiness violates human dignity because it is turning 
people into, you know, a thing because they can no longer feel unhappy because it's almost like the drugs are forcing them to be happy. All right, let's keep reading. This means that a life with dignity necessarily requires that one's freedom to feel unhappiness be totally guaranteed in one's actual life. Again, still it's going on with the same exact idea. Uh, let's read the next sentence. A life with dignity means a life that is not dominated by the sense of happiness. Okay, so it's kind of just elaborating on it. So um, I'm also going really slow here. You know, obviously when we're really reading the passage, you would be doing this a little bit more quickly, um, but I'm trying to break it down for you guys. So after I um, am finished kind of breaking down the sentences of a paragraph, I pause and I think to myself, what was the most common theme within this paragraph? And we've kind of said it a few times because a lot of the sentences were pointing to the same thing. So if I wanted to kind of have a little short phrase in my mind that would represent sort of the main idea of paragraph one, based on what I read, for me, I would kind of come up with the phrase that drug-induced happiness violates human dignity because it doesn't give someone the freedom to change their emotion or in another way they were kind of saying it, it turns a person into a thing. So we're just going to keep that in our mind. Let's read the second paragraph. A life with dignity has two characteristics. First, as has already been discussed above, a life with dignity is free from domination by a sense of happiness, regardless of whether or not it is acquired by means of drugs. So this is, again, kind of repeating what the first paragraph saying in a way, and it's kind of bringing in a little bit more of the emotion aspect by saying a life with dignity is free from this domination by a sense of happiness. Someone who has dignity is able to kind of control their own happiness or unhappiness. It's not, they're not dominated by a certain emotion. Next sentence. Moreover, a life with dignity should also be free from domination by our own strong desire to experience that kind of happiness. Kind of pretty much the same thing. It's just saying our happiness is coming from a different place, but regardless, if it's our own internal happiness or it's, you know, some happiness that's being brought on us by drugs, if we're dominated by a certain emotion and cannot control or we feel obligated to have this emotion, we don't have dignity. It's again, it's going along with this constant theme that we're starting to realize. So let's read the next sentence. The former domination comes from the outside and the latter originates from inside oneself kind of just explaining and comparing the two so that's interesting let's read the next sentence second a life with dignity is free from domination by the sense of unhappiness all right so this is the second characteristic that was mentioned is that um, someone who has dignity is also free from being dominated by unhappiness this is continuing to go with our idea that in order to have dignity you're not going to be dominated by happiness or unhappiness. You know, you can't be dominated by a certain emotion. Next sentence. This idea is more familiar to us than the first. A life with dignity should be free from the domination of negative thoughts about one's existence or one's own value. Again, it's kind of reiterating what they mean by a sense of unhappiness. Let's read the next sentence. People sometimes fall victim to this kind of self-negation when experiencing such hardships as severe and repeated abuse, the death of loved ones, or devastating disasters. Um, so this is actually a good sentence to make note of and kind of think to yourself, all right, in the second paragraph, they're starting to give me an example of when someone might be dominated by negative thoughts or unhappiness. So I would kind of note that. You might have to like go back to that. Sometimes they um, ask you questions about you know specific details. Next sentence. In these cases, human dignity means the belief that whatever their suffering and hardships, all human beings have a possibility to escape from domination by the sense of unhappiness and to regain the sense of self-affirmation at some point in their future life. He's saying these people are dominated by unhappiness, but you know, you still have dignity if you are able to change that work to change that emotion. You know, if you have control over changing that emotion, you still have, you know, human dignity. Next sentence. Hence, it might be allowed to use psychoactive drugs like SSRIs to medically support this recovery process for a limited period of time. 
paying special attention to the danger of domination by a sense of happiness. This is an interesting part of the paragraph because he's showing that these psychoactive drugs, he thinks that they do kind of have a purpose if they're being used to um, help someone control their emotions and leave the domination of unhappiness. But notice he does say for a limited period of time and that you don't want to be dominated by a sense of happiness. So he's kind of saying there's a middle ground here. I think a really common theme of this second paragraph here, my main idea that I would leave myself with, is that a person who has dignity is able to control their emotions, whether they be happy or unhappy. They have a, the ability to control how they're feeling as opposed to being dominated by a specific emotion. And then we might just remember that SSRIs were talked about in this paragraph and that he's not completely against them in certain cases. Let's move on to the third paragraph. Consider if the heart of a person who is in the depths of despair is filled with a sense of happiness caused by a perfect happiness drug. Alright, he's kind of just giving us a scenario here, so let's go with it. As a result, a drug-induced happiness dominates the person, and he, she, is deprived of a life with dignity. This sounds really familiar, right? At this point, it's like you really almost don't even have to pause to yourself because everything is kind of supporting that main idea. Next sentence. A person who is dominated by despair and the sense of unhappiness becomes able to escape from that mental state and to begin an effort to regain the sense of self-affirmation. Okay, if such medication can provide the person with an opportunity to explore his or her life with a sense of affirmation, it should be considered good news. Okay, so again, he's kind of saying the medicine isn't all bad. It can be helpful in certain situations as long as it's helping the person get control over their emotions again. Okay, next sentence. This is not deprivation of human dignity because it enables that person to escape from the domination of the sense of unhappiness. Yep, we just said that, right? So again, supporting that idea. Hence, I do not claim that the use of existing psychoactive drugs, such as SSRIs, immediately deprives us of human dignity, or that its use ought to be prohibited. Okay, next sentence. What I raise an alarm over is the use of a hypothetical perfect happiness drug that could fill our heart with complete happiness. And what I have done so far has been a philosophical investigation of the relationships between human dignity and the manipulation of a sense of happiness using a perfect happiness drug as an example. Okay, so this is super important. I think based on the main ideas that we're getting from each individual paragraph, we pause and we say, what was the purpose of this paragraph? What was the author's main idea? And we've said it so many times that it seems obvious now. It's kind of like one big main idea with a little extra, you know, I would say, I guess, like a sub main idea to keep in mind when reading the questions. Human dignity is when you are not dominated by a specific emotion. It is when you have control to change your own emotions. The sub main idea that I would keep in mind is that he's not 100% against SSRIs or a drug that would allow someone to gain back their control over their emotions, but he wants to make sure that the drug is temporary and that it doesn't trap someone in um, a certain emotion. All right, so that's the method, and it seems kind of silly because all you're really doing is really paying attention to what you're reading and summarizing each sentence and paragraph as you go, but it helps you you know by the time we got to the third paragraph we were like the main idea is so obvious and it was really easy to kind of grasp what the main point was um in the next video i'm going to show how we can use the main ideas that we took from this passage in answering the questions all right so i hope this helped you out it's probably not going to work for everyone so again this is just something that worked for me um i think it's really good to help you zero in on the main idea and the big focus of, you know, complicated wordy passages. All right, so I hope you guys enjoyed this. Um, if you have any questions, leave a comment below. If you want to see more of these videos where we kind of break down passages, um, feel free to leave a comment below, even if you have a suggestion for a certain passage that you're struggling with. 
We'd love to help you guys out on that. Um, and we'll see you in the next video.